A system is a process or a set of procedures that produces an output in response to an input. Okay. So here we have a system, right? As you can see, and we're just sending an input inside the system, and we receive an output on the other hand. Okay. Right? So um, system can literally be anything. That's it. Can be a circuit. It can be me mechanical thing. You know. Anything literally which takes an input, does some actions or computations within that environment and produces an output back is actually a system. Just a heads up, my aim here is to build mathematical concept and logic. So um, I will be using mathematical equations in most of the places. However, I'll try to also give a overview of the logic so that we know what is happening at any point of time. Okay. So uh, let us take some examples of system now. So let's see. Here we have an aircraft A, which is in the sky. Now the position of this aircraft A is dependent on how this joystick is actually operated. Correct. So basically, if I was to um, create a system across it, right? So the input becomes position of my central stick, right? And then the output becomes the position of aircraft in the sky correct so uh, let's take another example uh, second example most notably used is of a stereo amplifier so basically the voltage here is input from a cd player and what is the output voltage of speakers that's how we hear back the sounds which is sent in the speakers right so that's pretty much a basic example of system uh, if let's go deep down towards the system and understand that in detail okay so another example which is quite handy is phone systems. So for phone, when we call someone, we are speaking on the phone, right? So the input is the sound, right? So here is our input, sound in, okay? Now this sound is actually sent to the cell phone, right? So this communication actually happens, sound in, to the cell phone because that's how we say hello. So then a uh, cell phone now transmits this information to an adjacent tower. Right, the communication happens through electromagnetic waves, and then the star actually communicates to the next adjacent tower, <coughs> excuse me, which is closest to the tower on the receiving end, right? And then the tower communicates back to the cell phone, which is the output in our case, right? So, this is a beautiful example of a phone system. Here, what is flowing? It's just the sound in, it's the input. And what we are having outside of this whole system is sound out, right? So we're least interested what's actually happening inside this whole phone system, right? And that's how, uh, that's what exactly a system is, right? Um, so this is a system. Now, to understand a very detailed analysis of a system, let's just come out of our dear earth so we have an earth e here and we are standing right outside it okay so if i'm standing outside earth in itself is actually a system correct because um you can there are a lot of input functions which goes inside the earth and there are a lot of output functions which come out back from the earth right so for instance is when we are trying to do predictions like what will be the weather forecast and you know, when will probably be the next, um, you know, earthquake or something like that. So these are actually all functions or <coughs> input to this system which has been given and the output is the result that we see on the earth in this system, correct? So um, just for the simplicity, let us consider a very basic function. So f of x here is sunlight which is photon particle h mu right so this is the input to our earth all right now when this input is sent to the earth the sustenance of the earth is actually the output of the system right yeah because every life on the earth is only possible through what we call as sunlight right so if f of if f1 x is the function which is sunlight so the output is sustenance on the earth so earth is also beautiful example of but it's an example of a system. Now please note there are many, many different functions which can be connected with Earth. Um, 
the scope of describing all the functions is beyond the scope at this point but I will try to bring them upon soon as we proceed all right so there are tons of functions which can actually be an input on the earth in fact if there weren't these functions being inputted on the earth it was almost impossible to make any kind of intellect intelligent predictions in the first place you see what I mean um, it's just because of the beauty of the different functions which are actually getting input on our earth you know in the form of sunlight or even a asteroid or meteorite you know what do you say asteroid meteorite falling on the earth's surface these are actually all different kinds of functions okay and the output is different things that we observe on earth so so we just gone ahead and proved that this earth that we live in is a beautiful example of a system now let's see how we can depict the systems okay so systems can be represented in three important forms the first one is physical view physical view is just a physical diagram so you have a systematic diagram as you can see here you just throw in an input and then you just have an output which comes right in front okay so this is a physical view of a system we also have a more you know a more systematic approach of showing how a system is and that is a schematic view so in this we show the whole thing the system as a circuit and then you have some input let's say you apply guitar signal it's a voltage and then you also have a voltage which is coming out of this circuit here right so that's a more systematic way of representation if you can see the next view is actually system view uh, in system view we have a math function for input okay here is a signal xt which we are sending there is a math model of system and then we have an output which is again a math function so basically we are representing everything in the form of mathematical functions so these are the three important views in which we can represent our system signal relationships now let's discuss what are signals in details okay so um, signals they are nothing but mathematical functions set as an input to the system and is also an output to the system so from our previous discussion we were having a system and we were sending some input to the system and we were receiving an output correct so the input that we are sending is actually nothing but a signal and it's also a function mathematically correct so how do we represent the two signals in simple language is nothing but functions so we know the definition of function and what is it that is the value of one variable changes with the respect in the with respect to the change in the value on second variable correct so let's say if i have a timeline here and i have a time here so let us assume that there's another variable y here which is changing constantly with a change in time so that is a function and that is also a signal one value is changing in a change with respect to the value of one variable with respect to the another variable so for instance voltage which is changing with respect to time in an electric signal is an example of actually a signal so uh, before we understand signals further in details we should understand two important terms within function one is called as dependent terms and the other one is called as independent terms So, dependent terms. Now, let us have a function here, f of x equals y. So, here x is called as an independent variable. Why so? Because the value of x can be anything. It can be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And the value of y changes with the change in value of x. Let us take an example. Now, f of x equals x square and this is equal to y. Okay. So if I put x as 1, 2, 3 and 4, okay, so when x here is 1, this becomes 1 square, so the y becomes 1. When x is 2, this becomes 2 square, which is 4. So the value of y is actually changing with the change in value of x and so that is why x is called as an independent variable and y is called as a dependent variable, okay. 
So this is important to understand when it comes to signals because the value of one variable was changing with respect to the value of the other one. So the one which is on the x axis whose value is independent is called as the independent variable and the value and the function and the value and the second variable whose value changes with the value in the first variable is called as the dependent variable. Okay. Now let's go to signals again. Signals are of two types. One is discrete time signals and the other one is continuous time signals. So continuous time signals. Okay. So um, if a signal is defined at all the values of t, where t is a continuous variable, this is called as a continuous time signal. So let me just draw that real quick. Here we have a variable t time and we have a dependent variable and it's actually changing constantly with respect to time. Okay. So this is an example of continuous time signal. We can see that as the time changes, the value of the signal is actually constantly changing across the y-axis, right? So, uh, if we have to find any computation on a continuous time signal, it will always be calculus because it will be area under this curve, okay? We cannot apply algebraic operations here because the state of this signal is changing instantaneously when the time t is changing on the x-axis, alright? So, um... Just to pay close attention, everything on earth is mostly continuous time specific signals. Um, that is because we already discussed that earth is actually in a frame of reference which changes constantly with time. So any physics, any physical law governing earth and Milky Way galaxy in general actually is bounded by time on the x-axis and so we always keep time on the x-axis, alright? Um, later maybe in future we might just go ahead and derive equations which proves we might have parallel universes where time is not on the x-axis and so the maths changes tremendously for those spaces. The next signal that we have to discuss is discrete time signal. Okay. So um, signals which change state over discrete time period is called as discrete time signals. Okay. So let's just draw this. So here we have a timeline T. Let's say the state is S1 at time T1. The state of the system is S2 on time T2 and so on and so forth. So as you can see here, this is a discrete signal. Why? So because the value of this signal is S1 when the time is T1 and S2 when the time is T2 and so on and so forth. So it's actually holding a strength of its signal value for a specific interval of time. That's why it is discretized in nature and not continuous. Alright, so um, one more important thing that we need to know about um, signals in general is signals from uh, physical systems like the physical nature around us, they are all, they are con continuous in nature. However, um, signals from a more compact state, alright, like for instance there is a machine re-established. So one process finishes in time 2 seconds and then the material actually goes to a second processing system which tries to process the materials for let's say 7 minutes, 7 seconds and so on and so forth. So these are discretized in nature because you are holding the state of operation for some interval of time and all the operations which are performed on a discrete time signals are more algebraic in nature. You don't actually have to apply calculus for those kind of signals okay now um, <coughs> since we've discussed two signals just a brief intro on how we can convert a continuous time signal to a discrete time signal and vice versa because it is important it is just an intro we will discuss them in quite a bit details later so um, next term is sampling sampling helps us to convert a CT signal here is a CT signal into a DT signal so this is my CT signal and this is my DT signal which has been converted. This process of conversion is actually called as sampling. Please one important representation here, when you convert a CT signal to a DT, the expression is actually in this form. 
and it is x of n equals x of nt. This is because this was a continuous signal. So the function was represented as x of n. But now you actually discretized it within a specific time frame. So like let's say you divided this whole continuous signal into 8 samples. So that is why x n t which is n here stands for the number of intervals. Um, so capital T stands for the sampling interval that you have added to this system. Alright. And the n is actually the original signal values, right? So we will be discussing this further. Now let us just look the other way around. Converting a DD signal to a CD signal. Alright. So this process is called as re reconstruction. And as you can see that this is a very discretized continuous signal. So it's been converted to um, what do you say? To a discrete signal by just taking the frequency value at each point and then just displaying it out. But nevertheless, you just have to understand two terms here, sampling, which is converting your CT to DT and reconstruction, which is converting your DT to CT signals back. That's all for this, uh, this, uh, this video and we will meet again in the next one. Thank you.